A large number of psychologists have studied human behavior, and we should get some insight about what they are talking about. If uh, the studies by psychologists is an indication, then it gives an indication, an idea, that every one among us really want to grow. But it's only 2% of our mind that is a conscious mind. Right? The mind that we have is such a thing that you can divide it in three parts. One part is conscious mind, which is very small, hardly 1%, 2%. Bigger part is unconscious mind, which is 98% mind. When you're thinking about something, you're thinking with just 1% of mind. And even with that 1% of mind, if you think something, it works. If you think something, because your mind has power, mind power, your mind has a power. If you think about something, you are actually making it happen. So if you think with just 1% of your mind, you are able to think and you are make, able to make it. And if you think with 100% of your mind, just imagine how much power you can exercise on this world. The world is transforming because some of you are actually thinking. Some of you are let it go kind of people. Just passing by, looking, observing, keeping mum. No intention, no desire, no happiness, living saints. But some of us decide, take action and take leadership roles. Take Elon Musk's story, for example. You all know about Elon Musk, don't you? Still, I'll just uh, add his pieces of his story. He thought about electric car when nobody was thinking about it. He thought about it and he actually made it happen. He thought about taking rockets to the, uh, taking reusable rockets, right? Reusable rockets to sky. And we could not think about it. We cannot even think about it, even today. But he made it happen. There were thunderstorms in Australia. 10,000 thunderstorms. Thousands of people were dying. Thousands of huge losses were happening. Australian electricity network was gone. There was no way. That time, he thought about a solution. Why not install 100 megabytes of uh, power backup, electricity power backup. It, it was very difficult. Australian government said it's difficult. This man said, yes, it, if I can think, I can make it. He thought about it and he actually implemented, he gave a guarantee to the Australian government that in 100 days I'll do it. If I don't do it in 100 days, all money yours. So in 60 days, he did it. That is human capability. You think about it, you do it. Why do you go about, I mean, to Elon Musk, who is there in the United States? Why not look in India? The story of Rama, which you have been told, your forefathers have been told, Generation after generation, people have been told the story of Rama thousands of years ago in Rama. Katha. Rama is a real story from India. It was impossible to go from India to Sri Lanka. It was, there was an ocean in between. Thousands of years back. How do you go from India to Sri Lanka? Now Rama, who is a, living a saintly life, nothing. He is not having anything. But he has a determination 
and what he is doing is a organizing an army of monkeys and with the help of an army of monkeys he is able to construct a bridge bridge between india and sri lanka and he is able to march ahead attack and able to get his wife back from sri lanka to india almost impossible looking thing he made it happen and that's why he be call him bhagwan ram somebody who can do miracles somebody who can do impossible a bhagwan is within you so long as bhagwan is silent it is silent sleeping the moment it will wake the moment the bhagwan inside you will awake become awake the moment the bhagwan inside will start in its conscious form the bhagwan is you only but you have kept it veil you have kept it hidden you have kept the bhagwan inside you in a very very subtle form the moment you decide to give it a trial you will become the god in yourself you will be able to do miracles each one of us can do miracles in assam in india there is one person barely he is not educated person ordinary person he is not a professional like you very ordinary person he was appointed by one forest department for planting some trees for some 5 6 months so he worked for some 5 6 months planted trees and he liked this work his job was over but because he liked this work he continued this work he continued this work throughout his life even today he is doing only one work planting trees planting trees and you won't believe he has created a big forest himself one of india's best forest biggest forest has been created by one individual meraka one individual ordinary individual not a very educated person not a very powerful person not a very resourceful person he has created a large forest one of india's biggest forests very wild forest huge trees are there wild animals are there birds are there it's an amazing forest you think about it and it is there you can search about that person's life his biography on google you'll find the forest man of india something impossible you dream about it make it happen there was another person who thought about it thought about creating a path through a mountain nobody helped he himself alone completely cut a huge mountain and dug a road all alone it took him long time some 20 more than 20 years so what i should tell you that person this is a picture on him you can google on him is a film made on him. it's a real story a person is thinking about something and a person is able to do it miracle impossible thing happening who is doing impossible ordinary human beings only human being is such a living person who has been gifted by the by the god to be god himself you can be god yourself if you wish it is up to you no other animal no other living being can become god only human being can become god because you can be i mean you are actually god when you are transforming this world you are actually god 
who is god by the way whom do you call brahma whom do you call vishnu whom do you call mahesh brahma is somebody who is able to create this world vishnu is somebody who is able to maintain this world and mahesh is somebody who is able to bring order to this world if the world is not in perfect order he can completely destroy this world. you have all the three qualities in yourself that's why you are both three brahma vishnu mahesh all together yourself look at that person the person is able to create a huge forest himself the role of brahma entire forest amazing over 13000 hectares of land converted into forest by one individual in his own life single man one man and uh, look at the role of uh, uh gramin bank in vishnu role of vishnu what is gramin bank an ordinary lecturer like me i am a ordinary lecturer an ordinary lecturer like me mohammed yunus he used to see he used to walk down the street on dhaka bangladesh and he saw people are living in extreme poverty and he curiously asked them why are you beggar why have you stopped your old practice of making bamboo furniture bamboo furniture you know hab to bamboo furniture banate the baas ke furniture banate the sab kyun chhode and the poor person told we don't have money to buy bamboos furniture banane ke liye bhi baas chahiye na we don't have money and therefore we are beggars how much money you need ek hazar taka ek hazar taka okay i'll give you this man gives from his own pocket 1000 taka to a group of beggars and request them to restart their old business their old business of bamboo furniture and this similarly he gives these small 1000 taka loans to many groups and for your surprise these beggars become entrepreneurs 1000 taka is so powerful that this 1000 taka converts them into entrepreneurs this is a miracle by one person and what is really beautiful thing about life is that you give somebody very small amount of loan to somebody who is very poor he returns you back your money he returns back the money because this is truly honest work ordinary people are truly honest people you trust on them they are the, they are living gods they give you the full support this man kept on this way exercises in bangladesh more than 2 lakh beggars became entrepreneurs in this way. god a living god who is a living god muhammad yunus because for him it's very simple activity giving small loan small loan 1000 taka loan and converting beggars into outstanding entrepreneurs god in living thing the god is there inside you deep inside you 
you don't believe on Heavenly God. Why don't you believe in yourself? You have trust on so many things. Why don't you start trusting your own self? You have trust and confidence on so many external forces. So many external forces. Why don't you start trusting on the most important force which is there deep inside you? You have trust and confidence on unreliable people, on unreliable history, on unreliable sources. Why don't you start trusting confidence and building confidence on the most important source of inspiration that is deep inside you, hidden deep inside you, which is inspiring you, helping you, developing you, building you in a day, 24 hours are there. And these 24 hours are spent by people in different way. Truly speaking, this is the best asset that we have. You know, you have all types of assets. Some fool people say, I have a big building, that is my asset. Such a fool person. But our true asset is what? These 24 hours that we have got. The day has 24 hours and that is our biggest and the most precious asset. And some people use this asset fruitfully. Asset is what? An asset is something which if you use properly will give you profit. And if you will not use properly, that asset will depreciate. And ultimately it will, you know, what do you do about it? An asset is written off. <laughs> if something's depreciated too much, what will happen? Its value is zero. The 24 hours that you get in the morning is a real asset. So long as you don't use it, it's priceless. If you use it, you can still become priceful, priceless. The asset will convert you into priceless. And if you don't use it, right off, another day is gone. Indian people do not celebrate their birthday. Western people do celebrate, you know. You might have seen people celebrating uh, happy birthday, happy birthday, cake, cake cutting, you know, all these things. It doesn't happen in India. It happens in the West. Next time when you see somebody celebrating birthday, uh, just appreciate him, you are a Western fellow. You're not Indian fellow. He may ask you why? Because Indian people do not celebrate it like this. Why? Because Indian people are wise people. They understand. When you have a birthday, it means you're another year has gone. You were gifted with a life of 100 years when you were born. That means your asset was of 100 years. And every year this asset is depreciating. Every year this asset is depreciating. Western people do not have the wisdom to understand this depreciation. They, they become joyous. They become happy when one year is passing away. Indian people are wise. And therefore, they do not show happiness for birthday. They remember their birthday as an occasion when one more precious year has come, gone. They have to write off one more year. If you have to write off your assets, should you be happy? I doubt. Why should you be happy? So Indians use it in a different way. A typical Indian would get up touch the feet of his parents, touch the feet of his gurus, request them. Half of life is gone. Please give Ashirwad 
I can go get my goals. I can get my goals in the rest of my life. Remind me of my goals. Remind me, show me my path. The beautiful thing about Indians is that they understand they have a goal. A small Indian youth, a small Indian boy or a girl, very small, understand there is a goal of life. And that clarity of the goal is there in the smallest children. You don't, you don't find that even among grown-up people in the West. Although the West has advanced science too much. They've written so many books. They have, you know, piled up large number of IPRs, patents, copyrights, this law, that law. They have experts in that. There's a huge difference between the East and the West. We Indians always wanted to share the knowledge. Nothing is ours. Everything is of this world. Therefore, if an Indian invented something, he didn't claim it of himself. He said it is wish kalyan. This is for the world benefit. Therefore, no IPR. Who invented zero? No patent. Who invented uh, yoga? No patent. Who invented uh, meditation? There is no patent available. Nobody will say that it was invented by so and so person. Nobody. Because for Indian people, if some knowledge is there, it is of the universe, for the benefit of the universe. Soul is just passing by this universe. And this transition of the soul within this universe is beautiful if we are able to be respectful to this universe. It's so simple understanding that we Indian have. This is such a wonderful understanding and this understanding gives a very clear life goal to the smallest children in India. You ask any ordinary small, a boy or a girl, what is the goal of life? And there is very high clarity. You don't have to explain goals of life. In corporate world, we say that that company is best company, which has a very high clarity about goals. Have you heard about strategic management? If you have heard about strategic management, probably you might have heard that every company has to have an exercise to create its path. That is called strategic management planning. You prepare a plan about the company. And the most important thing that you do is you decide about the mission, vision, strategies, goals, objectives, plans for the company. For next 40 years, 50 years down the line. And if you do not have that clarity, then probably your company is not outstanding. The most beautiful aspect about life here is that we Indians are very clear about the strategic goals of life. Are you not clear? Yes, you are clear. Each one of you is very clear about the goal of life. Each one of you is very particular and very careful about your decisions because each one of you understand the ultimate purpose of life very clearly. And you are going ahead with that life. If you are preparing your study or if you are doing some study, you also understand that there is higher goal that you have to attain. Study is only a means. It's not goal. A degree or a qualification is not the end of the goal of life. It is not the goal. It is just a means to enhance your capability. The goal that you have in your mind are much higher. And those goals are about advancement of true well-being in this world. To spread happiness all around. 
and that true happiness has been explained in Indian folklore, rituals, customs, ethos. What are Indian ethos? Indian ethos are spread out even in villages, whether a person is having a qualification or education or not, doesn't matter. But Indian ethos is spread out all around. You can find it among ordinary people. You can find it in these small villages. You can find in, uh, I mean, uh, the, the rural youth. And this ethos is very clearly understood. Very clear, very high clarity. You may have introduced so many modern texts, so many modern study material in the name of uh, development of these students. But the real transformation, real development of the people is taking place through participation in community activity, community building, community in involvement, whereby everybody is experiencing the ethos that is all around us. And this ethos is fundamental in Vasudhaya Bhutam people all around, you know, they feel full of joy, happiness, when they are able to contribute to nature. And that is, you know, everybody in the Indian continent is trying to contribute to nature, to be nature friendly. And that's why when the modern technology is coming, People are opposing them in the beginning. Ultimately, they calm down, settle down, accept, because they realize they cannot oppose the modern technology. What to do, accept it. When new technologies come, initially the youth, the people, you know, speak out. What are you doing? Why are you causing pollution? Why are you spreading? Uh, why are you cutting trees? What will be the benefit of all these things? They try to oppose for some time, ultimately they settle down because nobody listens to them. They see, the, the India is two country. One is uh, what we call as India, which is primarily bureaucratic class, highly educated class, degree holders, English speaking people who are sitting at the top, who are planners, who are implementing, who are preparing creating laws, big, 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 huge laws, and in putting them and imposing them on our country. And another is Bharat. Bharat are people who are expert in their local language. They speak in local language. They understand the folklore. They are part of Indian ethos. They are true India, but unfortunately, they are not able to understand English. They are not able to understand what the government is doing in the name of this law, that law, this act, that act. They are ordinary people. They understand the nature, they love nature, and they hate the government. They do not want government, but they have no rule to play because there is a government which is continuously usurping more and more powerful power, becoming more and more powerful. Every day it is becoming more and more powerful and the ordinary people feel themselves more and more powerless. See, hardly 2% of India is India. Yes, 98% of India is Bharat. 98% of India is Bharat who are helpless, who are feeling powerless. And 2% people are India who are English speaking class, who are either IAS officers or CEOs or, you know, policy makers or, I mean, sitting in Niti Aayog or sitting in PMO or sitting in some chief minister's office, preparing plans, preparing laws, implementing it for entire country without realizing whether the ordinary people would be able to ever understand those things or not. So we are having to India. There's no doubt about it. Among this, these two India, 
there is that 98% India, which is Bharat, which is actually Bharat, who India. Asal mein Bharat kaun hai? Ye jo ordinary ho. Kisan ho sakte hai, wo skilled craftsmen ho sakte hai, jinko Bharat sarkar OBC ke. Aapko pata hai OBC ka full form? Other backward caste, which is absolutely wrong interpretation by government of India. आप उनको बैकवर्ड क्यों कहते हो? They are highly skilled people. वो दुनिया की सबसे ज़्यादा skilled लोग थे। आपको अगर उनके लिए कोई नाम बनाना था, तो बनाते highly skilled category people, highly skilled communities people। फिर उनमें कौन लोग हैं? आपको उनमें कोई कुम्हार मिलते हैं, कोई सुथार मिलते हैं, कोई सोनी मिलते हैं, कोई लोहार मिलते हैं, जिनके पास अद्भुत skills थी, इतनी शानदार skills सब एनवायरनमेंट फ्रेंडली स्किल्स, सब ग्रीन टेक्नोलॉजी पर आ रहा है, अद्भुत स्किल्स थे, हाईली स्किल्ड पीपल, बट यू डीमोरलाइज्ड देम बाय द वर्ड ओबीसी, अ फीलिंग ऑफ बैकवर्डनेस वाज क्रिएटेड, प्राइमरली बिकॉज़ ब्रिटिशर्स हैड अ पॉलिसी कि उनका एक सिद्धांत था कि डिवाइड एंड रूल, और जिनके Britishers wanted to create an inferiority complex among Indian people. They want to inferiority ki soch kaise pada kare. Aur isi liye unhoan is tarah ke propanshi rachi. To agar aapko apne andar ke outstanding human being ko zagana hai. If you really want to awaken your outstanding human being. The first thing you should do is that you should change the words around you. Never ever use a word like backward for yourself. Never ever use a word like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, which history books in India talk about Indian people. Don't ever use these words. Realize and understand it in true context that you people, you have an outstanding soul inside you. You are truly an outstanding human being. You are truly an outstanding human being. Believe in it. And then gradually move up. Slowly and slowly transform your goals. Transform your desires. Transform your expectations from life. If you have higher expectations from life, Life will give you higher rewards. There was a psychologist, Abraham Maslow. Now, Abraham Maslow said that people have some something deprivation. So, whatever deprivation they have, accordingly, they keep the goals of life. If a person is feeling hungry, for him, the goal of life is just getting a fat. A person who is having emotional insecurity, his goal of life is to get emotional security, get good home, get safe environment, that's all. So the level of deprivation will decide the goals of life. A person is having a feeling of deprivation to feel lack of, uh, I mean, feeling lack of esteem, then that person will be having some an esteem motive, a motive or a desire to be respected by others. I do not uh, know about this theory, uh, whether this theory really works or not. But I do believe that if you have something going on in your mind, that will have an influence on you and your future. If a person is just thinking negative, 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 what will happen? Wait for two years. Those negative things will actually happen, right? If a person is, you know, worried, 
अरे मेरी नौकरी चली जाएगी अरे मेरी नौकरी चली जाएगी अरे मेरी नौकरी चली जाएगी जस्ट वेट फॉर टू ईयर्स वॉट यू विल फाइंड दैट पर्सन विल बिकम अन एम्प्लॉयड दिस the power of ecosystem around us the power of our own thought processes the power of our ecosystem our own environment so what should we do very simple let's start being positive if somebody is positive thinking positive what will happen wait for some time there will be some positive news there will be some happy news to share right mix start making a small experiment on your own life what are you always thinking about aap har samay kya soch rahe where is your mind wandering about if the mind is wandering about here and there and there and there just start focusing on the goal this year is 2021 right now i have to become a ceo of a good company by year 2031 this year is 21 2031 i am writing my goal i want to become a ceo of a very good company by 2031 you write down this goal with full confidence do you think this goal will this goal is achievable goal do you think this goal can be attained by you do you think that this goal is really good goal if you think it is then you keep it if you think this goal is not good goal why do you keep it throw it away if you believe in it if you have confidence in it if you have trust on it if you have a dream about it if you really believe in it keep this goal your mind is focused you are thinking about it whenever the mind is drifting it will come back to this goal you will always remember this goal and this goal will take you to your goal this is the role of the goal a goal is able to channelize your energy in one direction and it helps you in attaining your goal so when you will attain your goals obviously this will be a moment of happiness for you and this because you aspired to attain this goal you attain this goal you wanted to get this goal so you will get this goal in long term no goal is impossible goal in short run nothing is possible in long term no goal is impossible goal this is bound to happen if you decide but if you say no 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 this is not the goal for me think about some other option do something for which you have a passion something for which you feel enthusiastic do something for which you really wish to do something really want to do it god has gifted some people with a goal from child they are really fortunate because they have a childhood dream i'll give you example of jagdish bhai patel jagdish bhai patel was a blind person so the god had gifted him a goal he was not able to see the world he was not able to walk because half of his body was paralyzed therefore a goal was there inside his mind the goal was there no confusion from childhood onwards he had a very clear goal i want to help other blind people. so clear goal i want to help other blind people lead better life such a high clarity of goal was there from very childhood on and he did miracles he was able to transform the lives of thousands of people 
thousands of blind people he organized blind people's association where only blind people were working only blind people and he truly empowered them so much that the ordinary blind people were able to do outstanding work so the god had gifted him the goal goal of life so some people are gifted from childhood some are gifted at later stage some get an accident but indirectly they get the goal of life i'll give the example of dr mehta ji danda ji mehta ji or dr mehta ji dr mehta ji got an accident but you should see positive thing in every negative thing also so in this accident there was something good the accident was severe accident and doctors told him that you have lost your leg you will not be able to walk now throughout your life and you have to keep bad ridden you might be thinking it's a very bad thing but i am telling you there was a good thing inside it because it was severe accident doctor told him on his face you have lost your leg you will not be able to walk so this created a goal of life a goal of life in the minds of dr mehta ji he immediately decided to use all his wealth all his money for the welfare of those people who are not able to walk as he was experiencing the pain of somebody who is not able to walk immediately he was thinking let's devote my wealth for the well-being of those people who are not able to walk and he immediately established bhagwan mahavir vikalang sahayata samiti in jaipur which is popularly called jaipur food jaipur food is offered free of cost free treatment free food free transplantation to everybody who has lost his leg this great initiative came from an accident the accident created a goal in the mind of dr mehta ji while lying on the bed he started thinking about life he started thinking about the goals of life and he created the goal of his own life this is my goal and i have to attain this goal what a great benefit of the accident the accident created a very positive impact accident created a very positive impact in the form of the goal of life a goal that would be transformational goal somebody's life completely transformed due to this accident and thereafter throughout life dr mehta ji devoted his entire life towards welfare well being of the physically challenged people you won't believe his organization jaipur food or bhagwan mahavir viklang sahayata samiti has till date helped 76 lakh patients 76 lakh patients have been helped by him amazing so people are able to make amazing contribution when their energy their goal their purpose of life is focused so long as you are thinking about this thing that thing this thing that thing you are not able to do anything yes you are not able to do anything once you are focused your entire energy is focused your entire thought process is focused your entire you know mind power is focused once you are able to focus your energy is focused and you are able to do miracles of life impossible is possible impossible is possible the moment 
you are able to focus on a goal so long as you don't focus you're drifting away here there here there but once you start focusing on a single goal and then your rebirth starts your rebirth starts we all human beings take two birth one birth is when our body comes to this world and second birth is when our consciousness is focused on a single goal of life so this is the second birth i am talking about the first birth everybody has the second birth very few people have this second birth can come through accident the second birth can come through some calamity the second birth can the second birth can take place through some tragedy also and this tragedy can completely make us immortal look at the life of gandhi ji once upon a time gandhi ji was an ordinary person he went to england to to become the barrister of law studied there he was ordinary person then in order to practice as a law he got a client from south africa he was an ordinary person till that time he went to south africa he was an ordinary person but then an accident took place or a tragedy took place the tragedy was that he encountered discrimination he was kicked out of the train he was kicked out of the train he was mated with very high very cruel discrimination and this tragedy transformed gandhi ji he got a new goal for life he rebirth his rebirth took place he became conscious person he started awakening his self awakening his consciousness his rebirth took place he became the most extraordinary human being from an ordinary gandhi to he became mahatma gandhi so an accident can transform you a tragedy can transform you an incident can transform you something where they were after your goal is focused your your energy is now focused you are a bundle of energy you might be saying that i am a human being i have five you know i have the two eyes i have this thing i have that thing well all these are, are of your body i am not talking about your body i am talking about you yes you you are not your body the body is different from you i am talking about you and you are a bundle of energy nothing else so when you understand that you are a bundle of energy nothing else you are not your body you are not your body your body is different from you and you are a bundle of energy and you can channelize your energy you can put your energy focus your energy on some goal and thereafter your true evolution starts that means your rebirth starts that means your true awakening has started that means that is the point when you start your journey the moment you say this body is different i am actually a bundle of energy and my energy is focused on my goal this is my goal and i am going to attain it then your journey starts and if your journey starts the earlier you start your journey the better it is and once you start your journey the ordinary things becomes extraordinary yes that's what i was telling you ordinary gandhi ji became mahatma gandhi ordinary human being becomes extraordinary the world is full of surprises we do not know what we can do until we actually do it people really come out and do miracles once they realize that they are different from their soul they are different from their body their soul is different 
and they are actually a bundle of energy and they have to focus on the goals which they have set for themselves. In all our endeavors, what do we do? In all our endeavors, we are actually transacting with this world. We are transferring our energy, our, our ideas to this world. What is your idea? Your energy. Your idea is nothing but your energy. And what do you do? Through your idea, you are transferring the, you are transforming the world. You have to understand it. Your ideas are your energy, your true self, true identity, and through these ideas, you are transforming the world. And that is your real contribution. The world will remember you for your ideas. The world will remember you for your contribution. That is your contribution to the world. The moment you are ready to contribute to the world, your contribution has started. The moment you clarify to yourself, yes, I am a fleeting idea. And my true worth is when I am able to narrow down my ideas, focus them and I am able to put these ideas to the world for their benefit. You know, when you are learning management, some people say marketing is very important business. And immediately they start talking about Philip Kotler. The field of marketing manager has today become synonymous with Philip Kotler. What exactly is Philip Kotler? He is a bundle of ideas. He has given a bundle of ideas to the people so that they can undertake marketing better. So Philip Kotler is not that human being. It is the bundle of ideas for which we remember him, for which we recognize him, for which we appreciate him. So the more contribution you make to the world, the more world recognizes you, the more world appreciate you. You start up, you start applying your ideas towards the benefit of the world. And that will be a contribution. There are thousands of fields in which you have to start working. Take, for example, carbon credit accounting. Carbon credit accounting is a new world, new field. The ideas have yet to emerge. If one of you starts focusing on this field, the field of carbon credit accounting. What will happen? Tomorrow you will be identified for this field. The entire world will salute you. People will read your books. Somebody is confused about carbon credit accounting, he will open your books. He will listen to your lecture on YouTube. He will read your blogs. He will read your articles. Your true birth has started. Your true contribution has started. Your contribution to the world will bring eternity to your life. Your contribution to the world will make you immortal. So simple. There are so many such fields. So many ways you can contribute. You use your expertise, you use your capabilities for the benefit of the world. And you can help the entire world. There are two persons. One person is thinking about profit, earning, income. He's trying to extract money from everybody. But there is another person and the other person is thinking about creating an impact, helping others, creating benefits for others, creating long-term relationship with others. What will happen? The first person will be having slight 
growth in the beginning. The second person will have slow growth in the beginning, but will be growing faster, faster, faster every day. And ultimately, the second person will become highly successful. So understand the world. Success in the world has to be understood properly. You should, you know, try to understand why some people are so successful, why not everybody. Your purpose is to become outstanding. Your purpose is to become more successful, isn't it? Then why not you try to understand why some people are so successful, why not others? Those people who are able to create an impact in the world are just very small, 1% people, 2% people. But why are they? What is their special? Read their biographies, read their listen to their interviews, read their articles, try to extract, try to extract something out of their, their stories, their biographies. Something which may be able to spark the inside you. You will not, you need not copy others, you need not imitate others, but you have to ignite the spark inside you. You have to bring out the best out of you. Now, how do you bring out the best out of you? That is the best way. You cannot do planning unless you really believe that through planning you can change your life. And if you believe that you can believe, you can uh, transform your life to planning, your journey will start. Yes, your journey has not yet started. It will start the moment you start understanding this thing. Read great biographies, read amazing people's contribution. There was a person, Rajendra Singh. He is known today for reviving extinct rivers. Those rivers which became extinct in Rajasthan, he revived those rivers with the help of villagers, with the help of community. Amazing contribution. He has revived some seven, eight rivers. Today, when people talk about rivers, people immediately talk about him. He picked up a goal, he picked up a direction for himself, he took a path, he prepared a plan for himself, he went ahead on that plan with full confidence, with full devotion. See, when we do something, we have to do with full devotion. If we do something with full devotion, the outcome is always beautiful. What exactly is devotion? Devotion is our performance of duties, our, you can call it dharma or our duty, duty and dharma are synonyms. So when we are putting in our best efforts, we are actually doing our dharma, we are actually doing our karma, we are actually, you know, trying to get, you know, a part of this world. And then we are able to give best contribution to this world. There are some people who have become outstanding singers, outstanding performers, Lata Mangeshkar, for example, example, outstanding singer. So look at her life, find out what is that through which she has become so devoted to her work. So when she is singing, she is performing her true puja. She is performing her true devotion. So when you do something with such a high level of devotedness, the outcome is always beautiful, isn't it? So how do we create among ourselves that transformation? What is life? Ultimately, life is everyday transformation everyday transformation. If we do not experience transformation, we are dying. What is the, the difference between youth and old people? Youth people are transforming towards positivity. They are experiencing happiness every day. They are achieving a positive transformation. 
and the old people find themselves helpless they are not able to attain positive transformation they are experiencing negative transformation and therefore they are old because in a way they are approaching death we can remain youthful throughout our life means throughout our life we can try to attain positive transformation in ourselves in the childhood a small child is attaining transformation with the help of teachers with the help of parents right the transformation is through insight the help is only by teachers the help should be minimum but only that much which can enable the transformation to take place slight help okay 1% help that's what i told you in the beginning that if you are transforming 99% it is your hard work the role of teachers is hardly 1% but that 99% perspiration in right direction in towards positivity towards creating your better future is concern is a matter of concern for all of us for you as well as for me my role or any other teacher's role or any other teacher's role or some total of entire counselors mentors teachers parents we all are making only 1% contribution but that 1% contribution also has to be restrained you know gichu bhai pade ka is a renowned teacher when we talk about teachers the first name that comes to our mind is a teacher should be something like somebody like gichu bhai pade so he established his school in bhavnagar was truly a great school teachers would not interfere with children teachers would not disturb students teachers would not stop students teachers would only encourage support guide give freedom it was amazing so in gisu bhai's bhadekha uh, school a small child was preparing drawing a visitor was passing by and the visitor said why don't you color leaves as green leaves why don't you use green color for leaves gisu bhai bhadekha immediately stopped that person please don't disturb the artist in progress let the child do the work on his own the child is trying to do something let him let his use his imagination let him use his passion the moment you are able to channelize your passion energy josh the role of the teacher is over teacher's role is only to enable you to identify the the passion within you and enable you to move in that direction to support you to help you if you are falling the teacher's task is to give you support if you are not able to find your goal if you are drifting here and there the teacher is there just to see that you don't cross the boundaries you remain focused on your goal your real hero is inside you yes your your hero real hero is inside you. and therefore the most important thing that all of you should do most important thing all of you should do and each one of us should do is meditation that is the greatest gift that the mankind has been given by indians we have given yoga no doubt but the most important gift that we have given to mankind is meditation dhyana even if you look at uh, 5000 year old uh, photographs of india you will find somebody doing meditation this is true india india's one important photograph you will find every time whether you look at india of today you look at india 5000 years back you look at india 10000 years back 
you'll find somebody doing meditation in india this is india's contribution to the entire world and this you should all practice because this will enable you to pick the true self within you earliest and this will enable you to focus your energy on your goal well i told you in the beginning you are a bundle of energy you are not a body you are a bundle of energy and this bundle of energy is useless this bit if it is not focused if this energy is spread everywhere then this energy is has have no power but if this energy is focused on a single goal truly focused this energy great energy you can become the greatest person of this world in a particular field on which you are focused so when will this journey start that will depend upon when do you start your meditations you start with just 5 minute meditation later on you can make up to 10 minutes at the most you can make it 15 minutes meditation whenever you like wherever you like the way you feel comfortable you may do it on chair you may do it on bed you may do it uh, on ground you may do as you wish wish but you start this will help you in channeling your energy so meditation meditation will enable you to start focusing on your goal of life will enable you to stop trying here and there and start focusing on a single goal the goal may look impossible today but i tell you nothing is impossible the moment you pick up a goal you're going to attain it what is your degree or what is your background hardly matters the moment you are doing something great you get the inner strength which is the most important factor in your success your inner strength is the most important factor you can do miracles with your inner strength you know today everybody knows about bombay dabba mumbai dabba wala mumbai dabba wala are who are mumbai dabba wala you know in mumbai for almost 125 years dabba wala are working what they do they collect tiffin dabba means tiffin they collect tiffin from your home and they give it to you in your office at one point and when you complete your lunch they collect back the empty tiffin and drop you drop it back to your home they that is their role the bawal and that is amazing work because they pick up the ba or tiffin from your home bring them to your office which might be 50 km or 30 km or 20 km from your home and return back the empty tiffin back to your home at a very nominal charges But the most beautiful aspect is in this process of the bawalas many people you know change hands initially the tiffin is taken by somebody else from your home tiffin is given to somebody else it is passed on through train local train and then it is then it's local bus then ultimately it is brought to your office and uh, the dibbawala some other person will bring that tiffin to you and you will get your tiffin every day they are taking some 10 lakh 20 lakh tiffins and distributing throughout mumbai no tiffin is interchanged no tiffin is exchanged no tiffin is lost no there may be rains there may be flood but the tiffin tiffin the the, the dibbawala don't miss out now today everybody know about mumbai dibbawala people are reading the case studies on mumbai dibbawala mba students are reading the case studies on mumbai dibbawala everybody is talking about mumbai dibbawala but who made them popular there are outstanding things happening in the world but we do not know because we don't read about them we don't notice them we do not you know we do not come to know about them so when things are happening so they there was a chartered accountant who came to know about mumbai dibbawala and who wanted to share the story of mumbai dibbawala with the world 
so he popularized mummy dabba wala throughout the world so his degree was chartered accountancy but his major contribution was he popularized mummy dabba wala throughout the world he was basically an accounting professional he was uh, an expert of commerce he was an expert of accounting and finance but he used his expertise not for accounting he used his expertise for spreading knowledge about mumbai dipawala how mumbai dipawala was performing today when you search on google you find him speaking on youtube and other places but he made mumbai dipawala popular throughout the world i would say he has got his purpose of life attained he has made the best use of his life he has put his energy focused on a single goal he has made amazing contribution to this world that is the goal all of you should have keep your energy focused on a goal and try to attain the goals of your life by keeping focused on what you want to achieve it's not important how much money you create but what is most important is what is the impact of your existence on lives of other people other living beings and this universe what is your impact because you are there in this world what is the impact of your existence to this world if you are a ceo of a company and you take really very good decisions your decisions will enable the company to grow your decisions will enable people to earn more your decisions will enable people to lead a better life the world will remember you yes the entire world will remember you for your contribution people will write case studies on you you know amul today everybody talks about amul the moment i say amul all of you feel happy because amul is today a symbol of high quality products Amul is a symbol of a story. Amul is a symbol of great dairy movement of India, a dairy movement which transformed the lives of so many villagers. Amul. Now, how does it did it happen? Amul is a story created by a few people. They encourage the villagers to organize themselves into a community. organization producer organization dairy organization and in that vertical amul crafted a story a story whereby you find a truly great dairy movement starts there are a lot of other products that are developed quality conscious organization evolves and we find today amul the story of india why can't we have such stories from our entire country we need people such i mean those people who created the story of amul were different from others because those people really were passionate people they were really focused they really wanted to do something extraordinary we need such people all around us we need such people all around us what we need to do we have each one of us should start learning those things which can help us we need to each one of us need to learn leadership each one of us need to learn innovativeness being original being innovative being creative each one of us should learn and appreciate diversity right each one of us should start appreciate diversity we should become more and more tolerant we should become more and more appreciative of our differences we should start respecting our differences we should start respecting creativity innovation these are subtle things and these subtle things will transform our lives and will create many stories like amul 
Amul kind of stories can be created by people like us. But for that, we have to start changing ourselves. Are we leader within us? Or we are just covert human being? Are we leader? Leader means if you find something is true, something is truthful, something is right, can you speak with confidence? Can you ask others to come forward? Can you raise your voice? Can you speak with confidence? Can you make it happen? If something is right, something is truth, understanding the truth, really exploring the truth and being sticking to the truth is leadership. If you are leader, others will follow you also. They will also become leader. A leader, true leader, creates many leaders. If you are a true leader, you will encourage others to become leader. That is the beginning of a new India. We want all of us to develop these qualities. The quality of leadership, the quality of compassion, the quality of working in green groups, working in teams, converting ordinary groups into extraordinary teams. We all have to cultivate these habits. You know how your recruitment takes place. When you apply to a company for selection, the selection a, takes place through different steps. One of the steps is group discussion. Then there is interview. Then there is medical tests. And then finally you are selected. So group discussion is a very powerful tool these days for selection. Why do companies use group discussion? Because they want to know. Can you really work in a group? Can you become a team builder? Can you, you know, motivate others towards positivity? Do you have leadership quality? Can you take leadership role? Can you really express yourself properly? Can you inspire others? These qualities are very important these days. That's why companies give focus on these qualities while selecting people. That's why I was telling you that now each one of us should develop these qualities among ourselves. If you have these qualities, these qualities will reflect and you will be selected in the group discussion. And if you don't have these qualities, you may have very high qualification, but you will not be selected because you don't have these qualities. And these qualities are so easy to learn so easy to acquire they are inside us these are so ordinary things but the ordinary things are truly the most extraordinary things therefore rediscover these qualities from within if you have these qualities you will be able to perform as an outstanding human being we want you to become an outstanding but when, you will you, when will you become the most outstanding human being? When, will, when you will rediscover the ordinary qualities hidden inside yourself. You have to rediscover these qualities which are there inside you. They are the most ordinary thing qualities. Why these ordinary? Well, if I am saying you have to become compassionate, you have to learn how to work in a team, you have to be a leader. You have to take initiative. You have to encourage others. You have to be supportive. You have to take people with full confidence. You have to enable other people to speak to you with full confidence. What are these things? These are very, very ordinary qualities. But if you have these qualities, you will become an extraordinary. Look at Indians today. India has given 
largest number of engineers to the world, largest number of doctors to the world, and largest number of CEOs to the world. You find, look at Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google. So many people are today CEOs of world's top companies. Why Sundar Pichai is the CEO? He has those qualities which has made him the CEO. It is these qualities. What are those qualities? So simple. He is living life so with highest level of simplicity. An assuming person. Such an ordinary person. Wearing casual dress, ordinary dress, he can come down to office. And talks with everybody without any ego. So passionate about work. So passionate about goal. So passionate about life. But leading everyone with such a high level of humility. His high level of humility, high level of determination, high level of willpower are worth his piling. And that's why he is the CEO of Google. He is the CEO of the Google for very ordinary qualities. What ordinary quality? Because he has very high humility, very high simplicity, very high leadership quality, very high determination power, very high willpower, very high creativity, very high innovativeness. And that's why he is the CEO of Google. Well, Ordinary things can make you extraordinary, then why not be an extraordinary? Because ultimately, you have to be what you are truly. The diamond is inside you and you have to just focus on that diamond. You have to just focus on the amazing qualities that are there inside you, the most respected, most valued qualities in today's context. Which is the most valued quality in today's context? I just read it. Leadership quality. Humility. Initiative taking. Communication skill. Ability to connect with people. Ability to relate with people. Ability to promote creativity and innovation. All these are there inside you. You are outstanding. Therefore, why not you take higher roles of responsibility? And for that, you have to start slight changes in your habits. Slight changes in your habits. Start focusing on your habits. Habits are not formed in a day. I understand that. But if you do something carefully, cautiously, for some 60 days or some 80 days, that will become your habit. So if something is not your habit, no problem. In next 80, 90 days, you can make it your habit. If you do it every day, carefully, cautiously, Slowly and slowly it will become your habit. You will do it automatically. So build great habits. For ordinary Indian people, there are many great habits that they have inherited from their ecosystem. For example, look at any ordinary Indian lady. Even in villages, what do you find? She gets up early in the morning. An ordinary Indian lady will get up maybe at 5 a.m. in the morning. Then what she does? Then she will worship her parents, her uh, god or goddesses, will give water, tulsi tree, tulsi tree, or people tree, go out and uh, water, give water to people tree, or, or will light a Deepak before a Tulsi tree. Then she will start preparing breakfast for her family. And 
these are all part of habits and uh, will offer a respect to every elder person in the family respectfully offer them the morning breakfast now look at the habits the great habits early morning good early morning she will get up this is habit she will give water to tulsi people in this way she is getting oxygen these are great habits these have been built as a habits among indian people for so many years and these small habits will make you great human being these habits will make you great human being. therefore you should also cultivate some habits in yourself and when next three months you can develop a habit if something is not your habit today in next three months you can change yourself for example some of you may tell me that look sir i get up at 9 am every day this is your habit today you can change it next three months you can change your habits for three months every day if you get up at 5 am it will become your habit after three months this will be your habit you will be getting up at 5 am like indian ladies talk to any indian lady any village in india and you ask them when do you get up she will tell me i get up at 5 pm this is the general habit of every indian lady you ask them what do you do in the morning immediately this is her habit she will tell you she will pray to her parents elderly people god and then she will give water to tulsi ji water to people this is a habit amazing good habits and these good habits keep them happy keep give them good life that's why i am requesting you you also adopt good habits and these good habits will give you good life and therefore you have to make some sustained efforts for 3 months to acquire a new habit so habits will help you in changing yourself further they will help you in your transformation develop habits good habits about everything sleeping develop good habits good habits about sleeping eating drinking uh, walking yoga meditation exercises daily routine just create good habits and when it becomes a habit you will be doing them in a routine manner you don't have to remember it for example food how do you take food how much time do you take in taking eating your food your lunch your dinner now one student told me so it takes me 10 minutes in taking my lunch then i requested him please change it change your habit change your lunch habits how take at least 40 minutes in taking lunch i asked him when you are eating something how big food you are taking he said this much of big roti i said keep it small as small as possible take small bits of your bread small pieces of your vegetables and eat them very slowly easily comfortably take as much time as possible in each chewing them chew them thoroughly slowly 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 so the so that every bit of the food is very well absorbed into your mouth so right now you are taking 10 minutes in taking your lunch with my request take 40 minutes for your lunch take it very slowly easily this is a good habit 
it will give you good luck. We want good life. We do not want quick life. We want a good life. So good habits are required. Clutch. Breathing. If I ask you, how many breaths do you have ordinarily? In let's say five minutes. Some of you may say I have five breaths in five minutes. Somebody will say I have 10 breaths in five minutes. Somebody will say I have 20 breaths in five minutes. Somebody will say I have 100 breaths in five minutes. Then I'll request develop good habits. Breathe slowly. In five minutes, only five breaths. Easy. Slowly, easy. No hurry. We want good habits for good life. Change your habits of sleeping, change your habits of eating, change your habits of uh, drinking, change your habits of uh, food taking. And when you change your habits, introduce new habits. For three months, you have to become cautious. You have to be careful. After that, it becomes a part of your habit. For example, some people speak very fast. I request them, please try to speak slowly, comfortably. I've been talking to you. Now I am talking, you might have seen, I'm speaking very comfortably. My speed is not fast. My speed is not uh, slow. It is ordinary. And because I am speaking in ordinary pace, I'm not feeling tired. You are also not feeling tired. If I speak fast, I will also get tired. You will also get tired. You will not enjoy it. I am enjoying it because I am speaking at a very relaxed pace. This has become my habit. And therefore, I am requesting everybody, please, don't try to speak very fast. Make it a habit. Speak at a very slow, comfortable pace. How do you sleep? How do you sleep? When do you sleep? They are very important. I have seen some people don't have time about sleep. Sometimes they sleep at 10 in the night. Sometimes they sleep at 12 in the night. Sometimes they sleep at 3 p.m. in the 3 a.m. in the night. Sometimes they don't sleep. So I request, please have a very good sleeping habit. That will help you, right? That will help you. If we are able to give our body, because remember, you are different from your body. You are a bundle of energy, you are a soul, you are a bundle of energy. And this your body is at your command. This body is going to serve you. This body is not permanent. It is going to serve you. But how long it will serve you, that depends upon the master. Well, you might be having a vehicle. You will understand it better. If you have a vehicle, let's say two-wheeler vehicle, a scooter or a motorcycle. If you use it very rashly, you don't use proper fuel, what will happen? This motorcycle will end up in next two years or three years. But if you are using this motorcycle very carefully, it will have a good life for next 20 years. Similarly, your body, this human body, which you are owning now, is designed for 100 years. Yes, it is designed for 100 years. And if you lead it well, it will last for 150 years. 
but if you don't lead it well it will end up in next 80 years 70 years 50 years so you are the master you have to decide in japan the average age is very high you can find there some people of the age of 110 111 why it is so because remember they have cultivated good habits so i am requesting you you should also cultivate good habits if you will have good habits you will have good life there's a village in uh, park occupied kashmir in which the average age of people is something like uh, 90 years or 80 years, something like that. You find a lot of people above 100 years of age here. People are able to lead long life because they are very cautious about what they are eating. Their food habits, their life habits are really very good. So I am requesting you, develop good habits about your food, about your lifestyle. Do you do yoga? No. Develop it. Develop the habit. Every day you devote one hour or two hours for yoga and meditation. They will help you. We have, we have to lead a good life. And the good life will be an outcome of good habits. So if you have good habits, well, you will easily be able to use your body, which is your biggest asset, for next hundred years very easily, carefully, comfortably. Don't believe on me. Look at MDH Masala, the founder of MDH Masala. Look at his biography, look at his story. On Google, you can search, you will find his biography, his story, his talking, his YouTube. Read from him. He led a life of 99 years, but very happy life. Throughout his life, he was active. He was contributing to the world. He was not dependent on others. He was self-sustaining, self-supporting throughout his life. He was active throughout his life. So read from his life. Learn from his life. And if he can give you something to learn, learn from him. We should be willing to learn from everybody. If we can get something to learn, we should try to get to learn from everybody as much as we can. We should be open to learn. Learning should be our, I know, lifelong passion. So if we can get an opportunity to learn from somebody, we should learn. So learn from him. MDH Masale. Amazing person. We have to reinvent our own self. Our true identity has been completely destroyed by Westerners. Because Westerners saw us from a different perspective. We had a different reality. Westerners could not understand our true Indian identity. Because they had seen India from the West, from a different perspective. Therefore, don't go with what the West is talking about. I am not asking you to not to learn from the West. If they have contributed towards science, it should be respected. We should learn from them. If the West has contributed to the field of knowledge, we should learn from them. We should all learn. But what we are, they do not know. And we also do not know because we are also cut off from our roots. So let's 
return back to our roots. Let us return back to our roots. If we will return back to our roots, we will be able to understand true India. And it is our moral responsibility to love India, understand India, propagate India, promote India, protect India. It is our duty also. You know, in Constitution of India, there are some 11 duties mentioned. Those 11 duties are our fundamental duties. Each one of us has to perform those 11 duties. What are those duties? Those duties are, we should respect our nation. We should understand our nation's true character. We should understand our freedom our nation's true, you know, true characters. We should understand our nation and respect. We can respect only if we understand true India. The modern education has somehow created a feeling of hatred among the people towards India. They have, the modern education has created a love towards the West. Obviously, because this is the this is the goal of the modern education to create the youth for multinational companies. So everyone is aspiring, as soon as I complete my education, I want to go to the United States. That's the dream of every youth today. But that is, I mean, betrayal to your own country. Your, your fundamental duty to understand your country. If you will understand your country, you will truly love your country. And then you would, you would love to take care of your country. You would love to help your country. You would love to understand its true character, its true history, not the history written by the Western scholars, true history. Try to understand the true history of India. Try to understand the true identity of India. The history books that you are reading today, they are not giving true character of India. Did you ever read about Ram Rajya in any history book? Did you ever read about the, the history of India during the times of Rama, which is the, considered the ideal period, Rama Rajya, the ideal kingdom of India. No. Therefore, why do you believe on this kind of history? Try to rediscover history yourself. Understand India in its true sense. Go to villages. You know, when Gandhiji came to India, Gandhiji stayed in uh, South Africa for a long period of time. After that, he came to India. So when he came to India, his uh, political guru, his guru, uh, his guru Gokhaleji advised him that please visit entire country, villages particularly, talk to the common villagers, understand India. I must say it was a great guru. He was a great guru. He gave very good advice. And I give this advice to every young person in India. If you get a time, don't plan to go abroad, plan to go to village, any village, and spend at least one month in the village. Do some farming, do some plantation, work with some farmers, understand the life of ordinary Indians in the villages. In this way, you will understand true India. If you will understand true India, then you will be able to take a decision for the benefit of Indian people. This is, in my opinion, very important for all of you. Why? The, why the bureaucrats and policy makers are not able to good, make good laws for India? Because they are disconnected from India. They have not spent considerable time in villages in India. 
they have not worked with ordinary farmers in India. Therefore, they are not able to understand India. But since you are destined to become the CEO of future, if you want to become CEO of the future, if you want to become a great leader of the future, then develop your roots. To connect with the roots, you should spend some time in villages. You must work with ordinary farmers. You must understand the true India. You must try to understand the problems faced by common villagers in India. And then you should be able to understand the true India. This will help you in building your roots. If you will have very strong roots, you can rise, sky is the limit. You will be rising like anything if you have very strong roots. Therefore, build strong roots and re revive age old businesses, age old industries of India. India had a very flourishing past. Indian businesses were once upon a time very flourishing. When Britishers came to India at that time, Indian industries was, was at a peak. Who are these that's list? Like these people like Sony, Sothar, Luhar, they were all industrialists of India. They were all technologists of India. They were all scientists of India. They were creating outstanding products and their products used to be in heavy demand. Their products were sold all over the world. They were really outstanding people. But Britishers crushed them, declared them as backward people, told them that you are backward people and asked them not to do the work they were doing. And if they continued their skilled operations, the Britishers killed their hands. The Britishers killed the hands of outstanding skilled workers from India. It was very despicable. What was the intention? Because the Britishers wanted Indian people to purchase the goods made in England. And ultimately, the dreams of the Britishers came true. Today, we are not buying anything made in India. We are buying everything made out of India. But why? Because consciousness has been killed. Britishers have achieved their goal. Now it is your duty to revive the industries of India, the cottage industry of India, the small industries of India. Now it is your duty to revive them. I ask you a very simple question. Do you eat chocolates? Yes. Your answer is yes. Okay. Which chocolate do you buy? I know your answer. So don't give the answer. Now my request is, next time when you go to the market to buy a chocolate, please, instead of buying chocolate, buy Bhavartil Papri. So next time you go to the shop to buy a, buy a chocolate, ask the shopkeeper, I don't want to buy chocolate today. I want to buy Bhavartil Papri. Probably you will not get Bhavartil Papri because nobody wants it. Therefore, no shopkeeper keeps it. But when you will ask Bhavartil Papri, the shopkeeper will give an order that somebody, people are asking for Bhavar Til Papri. What will happen? The, the Til Papri makers in Bhavar will get job. They are outstanding workers, amazing skill. Their skill is amazing. A Til Papri made by Bhavar Til Papri workers is so good, so tasty, so good for health. 
it is 100 times better than the chocolate that you are eating. But nobody gives advertisement for Tilpapri. Everybody gives advertisement for Cadbury, whether it is Amitabh Bachchan or others. They are giving advertisement. They are asking you to eat Cadbury. I am not against Cadbury. If you will not eat Cadbury, Cadbury will not close down. It's a global company. It's a huge company. It's a very big company. It will continue. So many people will buy its product. No problem at all. But I'm only worried because people like you are not buying goods made by Indian artists, Indian craftsmen, Indian cottage industries. They are dying. I am therefore requesting you, please buy Dyaavar Tilpap. Amazing art. It will close down. You know, the chocolate that you buy, you are buying at a rate of 3,000 rupees per kg or 4,000 rupees or 5,000 rupees per kg. And you know, the Tilpapri seller is not able to sell even at 200 rupees per kg because it is not advertised. It is not a fashion. It is 100 times better than chocolate, but it is not selling. So my humble request to you is start buying Indian products, unbranded products. This is my humble request to you. So next time you go to market, please ask for the property. Ask for Indian sugar, which is, what is Indian sugar? Mishri. Ask for Mishri. Ask for Bura. If you will ask for Mishri, then this product will remain. It will survive. And it's outstanding. It's 100 times better than sugar. Mishri is 100 times better than sugar. It is chemical free. It is a very good product for your health. It is 100 times sweeter than sugar. 100 times better than sugar. Then please, next time, instead of sugar, please buy Indian sugar, which is Mishri. Next time you go to the market, I request you, please buy Indian unbranded products. Thousands of Indian artists are losing their jobs every day. If people like you will start respecting Indian products, India will again revive. India will survive. Indian ordinary people, that is Bharat, Bharat ke jo ordinary log hai, wo bach jayenge. Bharat ke outstanding skill log, aaj berozgar hai. Aaj unko, unko aap ke sahayog ki zarur. आप सब से मेरा विनम्र निवेदन है अगली बार बाजार जाएं प्लीज इंस्टेड ऑफ वेस्टर्न प्रोडक्ट्स सुगर इज अ वेस्टर्न प्रोडक्ट चॉकलेट इज अ वेस्टर्न प्रोडक्ट आप वेस्टर्न प्रोडक्ट्स की जगह प्योर इंडियन प्रोडक्ट्स मांगिए आगरा का पेठा मांगिए सरदार शहर की पीनी मांगिए ब्यावर की तिलपापड़ी मांगिए चिड़ावा की पेड़े मांगिए Shopkeeper se maangi, nahi milega, koi baat nahi. The shopkeeper se puchhi, aapke paas chidawa ki pede hain? Arre, ye bhi nahi hai aapke paas. Unke upar hansiye, maak kariye unke upar. Is bahane, bharat ke ye paramparagat artist, wapas kaam par lot jayenge. Inko nokri milne lag jayega. Inko kaam milne lag jayega. Inke hunar ko dunia salam karega. और इनके हुनर जबरदस्त हैं मैं तो कहता हूं अगर आप में से कोई ब्यावर की तिलपापड़ी एक्सपोर्ट करने लग जाए तो पूरी दुनिया में लोग ब्यावर की तिलपापड़ी खरीदने लग जाएंगे और तब अमिताभ बच्चन विज्ञापन करेगा अरे ब्यावर की तिलपापड़ी खाओ ब्यावर की तिलपापड़ी खाओ और तब मजा आ जाएगा तब ये ब्यावर की तिलपापड़ी तीन हजार रुपए किलो और तब ब्यावर के अद्भुत कारीगरों को उचित पारिश्रमिक मिलेगा और वो भी ठाट से जीवन जीएंगे अभी वो बिचारे किस हाल में जीते बस आंखों में आंसू आ जाए ऐसे हाल में इन अद्भुत कलाकारों के लिए 
हम लोगों को हमेशा सलाम करना चाहिए अगली बार कभी भी आप बाजार जाएं कृपया करके भारत के इन अद्भुत कलाकारों को सलाम करें मौका मिले आपके अंदर हिम्मत हो तो अपने ऑफिस में मटकी रखिए बजाय की फ्रिज की इस बहाने किसी न किसी कुम्हार की आप मदद करेंगे गमले खरीदिए तुलसी का पौधा लगाइए कुम्हार की भी मदद करेंगे आप और तुलसी माता के द्वारा शुद्ध ऑक्सीजन फैलाएंगे आपको मौका मिले पेड़ लगाइए ऑल ऑफ यू शुड टेक एन ऑफ टू प्लांट एटलीस्ट टू थ्री ट्रीज एवरी ईयर हर साल कम से कम दो तीन पेड़ आप सब जरूर लगाए उनको पेड़ दें पेड़ भी कैसे पीपल जैसे बरगद जैसे मजा आ जाएगा पूरा भारत हरा भरा हो जाएगा क्या आप जानते हैं बरगद के पेड़ की लाइफ क्या होती है बरगद के एक पेड़ की उम्र होती है तीन हजार साल तो अगर आप लोगों ने मान लीजिए आप लोगों में से पांच लोग भी मेरे कहने पर साल के दो दो बरगद के पेड़ लगाते हैं तो आप सोचिए अगले तीन हजार सालों तक आपका और हमारा हमको याद करने वाला कोई रहेगा इस जमीन पर आप जानते हैं ना आप मानते हैं ना बरगद के पेड़ में भी चेतना होती है हम भारतीय लोग तो हर जीवन में चेतना मानते हैं पेड़ में भी चेतना मानते हैं पक्षी में भी चेतना मानते हैं जानवरों में भी चेतना मानते हैं इनफैक्ट हमारे लिए तो सब बंद नहीं है क्योंकि वेस्ट तो ये देख के परेशान है पश्चिम तो ये देख के परेशान है कि ये भारतीय लोग पागल हैं ये तो हर एक की पूजा करते रहते हैं ये बंदरों की भी पूजा कर लेते हैं ये हाथियों की भी पूजा कर लेते हैं और गाय तो इनके लिए साक्षात देवी है तो ये हम भारतीय है हम भारतीयों को समझना पश्चिम के लिए इम्पॉसिबल है लेकिन यह आपका कर्तव्य है कि अब आप अपने अंदर छुपे हुए असली भारतीय को पहचाने असली भारतीय को पहचाने पश्चिम नहीं ट्रू इंडियन बने बिकम ट्रू भारतीय हर चीज में पहले भारतीय बने आपके घर में फोटो किसके लगे क्या आपके घर में किसी महान भारतीय व्यक्ति के फोटो है वो कबीर हो सकता है वो रविदास हो सकता है वो महान भारतीय संत हो सकते हैं वो महान भारतीय चिंतक हो सकते हैं रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर हो सकते हैं राम हो सकते हैं कृष्ण हो सकते हैं किसकी फोटो है आपके घर में वो आपको हमेशा प्रेरणा देती है कि देखते ही याद आएंगे उनके विचार मुझे बड़ा दुख होता है किसी भी स्कूल के अंदर किसी भी स्कूल में जाइए आप आपको भारत की जो अद्भुत प्राचीन मैं आधुनिक भारत की बात नहीं कर रहा मैं प्राचीन भारत की बात कर रहा हूं प्राचीन भारत की गौरवमयी फोटोज आज किसी वेस्टर्न माइंडेड इंग्लिश स्पीकिंग स्कूल में मिलती ही तो फिर कैसे हम वो संस्कार दे पाएंगे स्कूलों में तो नहीं है आपके घर में होनी चाहिए आपके घर से ही शुरुआत करें आपके घर पे आप भारतीय हजारों वर्षों की जो आदर्श हैं चाहे वो महर्षि दरीची हो चाहे वो वैसे राजा भृगु हो चाहे राजा हरिश्चंद्र हो इन महान हमारे पुरखों की कहानियां चित्रों के रूप में अगर आपके घर में जगह नहीं है पाएंगे तो ये कहा जाएंगे कौन इनको याद रखेगा ये हमारे पुरखे हम सबकी कलेक्टिव रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है इनको याद रखना और इनके आदर्शों को बनाए रखना इट इज आवर मॉरल ड्यूटी टू रिवाइव भारत भारत को ब्रिटिशर्स ने नहीं खत्म किया ब्रिटिशर्स ने जब तक राज किया भारत में स्वदेशी मूवमेंट चरम पे था लेकिन ब्रिटिशर्स के जाने के बाद भारत का कत्ल हो गया भारत को किसने मारा हमारी ही 
आधुनिक शिक्षण संस्था इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूल्स ने इंग्लिश मीडियम कॉलेजेस ने जहां कोई भारतीय आदर्श सिखाए ही नहीं जा रहे अब हमारा ये कर्तव्य है हम अपने भारत को फिर से रिवाइव करें लेट्स ऑल टेक अ कमिटमेंट टू रिवाइव आवर ट्रू भारत फ्रॉम आवर ओन सोल कोई और नहीं हमको ही शुरुआत करनी वी हैव टू डू इट नो बडी एल्स विल डू इट वाई शुड समी एल्स अंग्रेजों के लिए भारत के लोग आदर्श थोड़े हैं हमारे लिए हमारे कुछ के आदर्श हैं भाई आपके पिताजी को आप याद रखोगे आपके पड़ोसी थोड़े याद रखेंगे सिंपल सी बात है आपके पिताजी का फोटो आपके घर में रहेगा आपके पड़ोसियों के घर में थोड़ी रहेगा सिंपल सी बात है तो अगर भगवान राम भारतीय लोगों के लिए आदर्श हैं तो उनका फोटो आपके घर में रहेगा ना ब्रिटेन में थोड़ी रहेगा उनके उनका फोटो यूरोप के लोग उनको थोड़ी याद रखेंगे इट इज योर ड्यूटी टू रिवाइव दस भारत एंड यू ऑल शुड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू इट इफ यू विल नॉट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट हु नो बडी एल्स आज की the modern schools of today do not have the photograph graph of shravan kumar i request you schools do not have you should keep the photograph of shravan kumar in your home in your home he should be ideal shravan kumar should be ideal for you if you will not respect shravan kumar who will respect bhai wo to aapke hi purkhe the hamare hi purkhe श्रवण कुमार अगर हमारे पुरखे हैं और हम ही उसको याद नहीं करेंगे कौन याद करेगा कोई क्यों नहीं याद करेगा ये पुरखे तो वो हमारे हैं आदर्श हमारे लिए हैं और हम ही उनको इग्नोर कर रहे हैं हमने उनकी तस्वीरों को बाहर फेंक दिया पहले हर स्कूल में श्रवण कुमार की फोटो हुआ करते थे आज के किसी आधुनिक इंग्लिश मीडियम स्कूल में मुझे श्रवण कुमार का फोटो नहीं दिखता बहुत दुख होता है आप सबसे निवेदन है कृपया करके फिर से हमारे भारत को ग्रेट भारत को भारत महान है इसमें कोई दो राय नहीं लेकिन उस भारत को फिर से आप लोग रिवाइव करें अपने घर से शुरुआत करें अपने जीवन से शुरुआत करें आपके घर के अंदर श्रवण कुमार की फोटो होना चाहिए अन्नपूर्णा माँ की फोटो आपकी रसोई में होनी चाहिए आपके घर के अंदर शुभ और लाभ लिखा हुआ होना चाहिए पहले शुभ फिर लाभ शुभ मतलब सारी दुनिया की मंगल कामना प्राणी मात्र के कल्याण की कामना लाभ अपने आप आएगा पहले शुभ फिर लाभ ये सब चीजें अद्भुत है अगर कोई कहता है कि गणेश और लक्ष्मी मॉडर्निटी के साथ सिंबलाइज नहीं कर रहे तो उनको इग्नोर करिए भारतीय संस्कृति का तो आधार है हम जो भी शुभ काम करते हैं गणेश जी को याद करके करते हैं और लक्ष्मी जी का आशीर्वाद लेकर के करते हैं सरस्वती को याद करते हुए करते हैं हर शिक्षण संस्था में सरस्वती की मूर्ति होती है लक्ष्मी हर घर के अंदर होती है लक्ष्मी का मतलब यही है कि वेल्थ आए और हम उस वेल्थ का यूज कल्याण में करें दुनिया के कल्याण में करें आपके पास पैसा एक्स्ट्रा है आप उस पैसे से गौशाला को चंदा दें धर्मशालाएं खुलवाएं ये भारत का आदर्श है लेकिन यू हैव टू वर्शिप वेल्थ दिस इज मॉडर्न वेल्थ आईक्यू लक्ष्मी की आराधना एक तरह से मॉडर्न कॉन्सेप्ट भी है यूरोप में है कॉन्सेप्ट अमेरिका में कॉन्सेप्ट है वेल्थ ईक्यू उसका कॉन्सेप्ट भारत के हजारों वर्ष पुराने कॉन्सेप्ट लक्ष्मी माँ की आराधना से तो हमें विदेश जाने की जरूरत नहीं है ये वेल्थ इक्यू का कंसेप्ट समझने के लिए वी हैव टू रिवाइव आवर एंशियंट नॉलेज एंशियंट विजडम एंड वी हैव टू रिवाइव आवर बॉन्डेज टू आवर मदरलैंड भारत के साथ हमारा जो जुड़ाव है उसको रिवाइव करिए भारत की जड़ों से जुड़िए अपने आप को गाँव में जाइए उस समय गाँव में बिताइए पेड़ लगाइए और प्रकृति के साथ जुड़िए पर्यावरण का जो नुकसान हो रहा है उसको रोकने के लिए आवाज उठाइए प्लास्टिक के विरुद्ध आवाज उठाइए प्लास्टिक को पूरी तरह बैन करवाइए हर शहर को बेहतरीन शहर बनाने के लिए हर गांव को बेहतरीन गांव बनाने के लिए आप भी आवाज उठाइए मैं भी आवाज उठाता हूँ हम सब लोग प्रयास करेंगे 
आपको डेफिनेटली फायदा मिलेगा सोशल मीडिया पे एक दूसरे के साथ जुड़ करके अपनी आवाज उठाएं आई एम त्रिलोक कुमार जैन प्रोफेसर त्रिलोक कुमार जैन यू कैन सर्च मी ऑन सोशल मीडिया एज प्रोफेसर त्रिलोक कुमार जैन और एज नॉलेज क्रिएटर्स वी आर हियर वी विल ऑल ट्राई आवर बेस्ट टिल आवर लास्ट टू हेल्प रिवाइव भारत एज अ ग्रेट कंट्री अपने देश के लिए जहाँ तक हो सके भारत शब्द काम में लीजिए इट इज ट्रूली आवर आइडेंटिटी इंडिया वर्ल्ड विदेशों का दिया हुआ है भारत हमारा खुद का देश का नाम है यूज द नेम ऑफ आवर ग्रेट कंट्री ये हमारे पेरेंट्स सुपर पेरेंट्स हमारे पुरखों का दिया हुआ नाम है भारत इस पर विश्वास रखिए और जितना हो सके इसका इस्तेमाल करिए थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू सर